Organic farming is steadily increasing. That's good. Pour parler d'agriculture et d'Europe à la jeunesse. Der Klimawandel erfasst immer weitere Teile der Welt. Farmers help us bring nature back and preserve biodiversity. Ceux qui sont dans le rouge s'en sortent quand ils font plus vert. La qualité dans ce pays, elle doit être là pour tous. The truth is that you talk to people from the peninsula, they'll tell you that the Platano de Canarias is something else. I grow the Platano, and for me, this product is so much more than just a Platano. It's my livelihood. It helped me raise my family. Thanks to La Platano de Canarias, we have lived well. My children have studied and grown up. It's my way of life. It's the only thing I know, growing the Platano and being in this business. Here on Food for Europe this time, we're going bananas. We're in the Canary Islands, among the outermost regions of the European Union, talking to a farmer who grows the famous Platano de Canarias banana. The Canaries archipelago lies off the west coast of Africa, but it's part of Spain. That's the peninsula to which our farmer refers. Come with us as we learn more about this unique fruit and its role both in sustaining this community and educating youngsters about Europe's vast heritage of food and farming. Buenos días. Hello, my name is Santiago Rodríguez Pérez. I'm 68 years old. I'm going to tell you a bit about my life, so you know more about me and about the Platano de Canarias. We're here in a town called Las Galletas, on the island of Santa Cruz de Tenerife. Santiago is a second-generation farmer in the Canaries, the heir to pioneering agricultural work in the late 1960s that gave birth to today's extensive, advanced and export-oriented Platino de Canarias industry. I'm following in the footsteps of my parents, who were the ones who started this banana plantation. Before them, there were no bananas cultivated in this area. They had to transform the land, because the soil here is volcanic, so they had to add a layer of topsoil for the banana plants to grow. They had to plough the land, work it, and then transport soil from elsewhere so that they could create the banana plantation. OK, but what about the platano itself? What makes it so special for consumers? The platano de Canarias is something different from other bananas that come from elsewhere. Those products come from tropical regions, so for reasons of climate, the banana develops much faster, ripens much faster, forms faster. Here, it's a subtropical zone. We have the right temperature, but the banana takes much longer to develop. It acquires a different flavor and grows in a different shape. The soil is also favorable because it's volcanic, and that gives it a character that other bananas simply don't have. We asked Santiago about the challenges of the Platano de Canarias sector. Above all, here in the Canary Islands, we're having difficulties with adequate water supplies. It's becoming increasingly difficult to grow crops. And now we're facing competition from bananas cultivated in Central America. Well, we call those ones bananas and we call ours platano, even if they are in the same category. Because we are a member state of the European Union, our costs for production, transport and packaging are skyrocketing. If it were not for European aid, this sector would disappear. It simply can't survive on its own. Beyond conventional assistance to farmers like Santiago, the European Union helps maintain the exclusivity of this particular banana through its system of geographical indications, or GIs. We've covered this before on Food for Europe, and we'll talk a bit more about it later. But essentially, it's a way of helping consumers recognize the authenticity and quality of a product. And one such protected product, of the more than 3,500 in the EU, is Platino de Canarias PGI. The GI system complements the work done by the producers association Asprocan to preserve the added value of the platino. We should be thankful to Asprocan for everything they have achieved from the perspective of advertising and media exposure. Thankful indeed because we don't see this very much at all in other sectors. 
And if the consumer understands that this platano is something special, that it's something better than a normal banana, and if the consumer is willing to pay a higher price because it's a higher quality product, I believe that this is also thanks to the awareness that Aspercan has created among consumers. Thanks to our platano farmer, Santiago Rodriguez Perez. And to follow up on what he was saying there about the support he gets from Aspracan, Food for Europe visited the organization's office in Santa Cruz de Tenerife. My name is uh, Sergio Cáceres. I'm the general manager of Aspracan. Aspracan is the association that uh, represents uh, all producers of Platano de Canarias in Canary Islands. It means one voice and one organization that really uh, represents uh, the interests and the needs of uh, all of them in six different islands of uh, Canary Islands. Moreover, Asprogan is also in charge of uh, marketing and communication of Platano de Canarias. The humble Platano de Canarias is at the heart of the Canary Islands economy. But Sergio is mindful that his responsibility goes well beyond economics. I really love this job because we are not only trying to help and contribute to, to a great uh, brand and product in, in, in Spain, but also try to, to support the labor of uh, more than 8,000 uh, small farmers that we have in Canary Islands, where, where in, especially in rural areas, this activity represents a critical pillar of our economy and our society. I mentioned just a moment ago the added value of the EU geographical indication system. And I put that to Sergio. Protected geographical indication, PGI, is really uh, important for us because uh, well, it was approved in, in 2013 and it was a uh, recognition of our differences. Uh, we have uh, quite different conditions, uh, social conditions and environmental conditions. So with the protected geographical indication, what we have is uh, an official recognition from the European Union. Platinum Canaris is the only variety of banana under a protected geographical indication scheme. So this, uh, this means the, the, the importance of our activity and the quality that we have and we provide to European consumers. We heard about the vital social role that the Platano de Canarias industry plays in the Canary Islands. But defending strong social conditions also risks putting the industry at a disadvantage. Better social conditions. Uh, they are really uh, good news, but at the same time increase our, our cost uh, to a much higher level. Banana internationally is a fruit that keeps the same price in international markets as they were 10, 15 years ago. We are competing with uh, third countries, mostly from Africa and Latin America, trying to keep competing with them, trying to keep differentiation at the same time, trying to cover this cost. Thanks, Sergio from Asprocan. Well, on the subject of EU support, in addition to the protected geographical indication status, which brings a higher price for GI products, the EU school scheme for fruit and vegetables enables member states to distribute local products, even local GI products, to pupils. Through the school scheme, pupils in the Canary Islands consume locally produced Platino de Canarias, and it's supported with funds from the EU budget. We'll learn more about the EU school scheme in a moment. But for now, let's stay in the Canary Islands and visit a school in Tenerife, whose pupils, through the support of the EU school scheme and the regional government, receive this unique fruit for their nourishment. Buenos dias. Hello, I'm Maria Nieves Hernández Velázquez. I'm the director of Los Cristianos School. We are a multicultural institution that welcomes around 500 boys and girls from 36 different countries. As a school with these characteristics, our mission is educational but also social, because we are the first to help children who've just arrived in Tenerife so that they feel not just welcomed but also happy and equal to everyone else. For Maria Nieves, when it comes to school children, healthy minds and bodies are fueled by the right food choices. 
Nuestra participación en el plan escolar. Our participation in the EU school scheme takes place through the Ministry of Education, Vocational Training, Physical Activity and Sport. The fruit and vegetable scheme aims to promote and increase the consumption of fruit and vegetables by children to prevent them becoming overweight or obese and suffering from associated diseases. This scheme has a long history in our Canarian community starting in 2009 and running to the present day. Participation in the EU school scheme has therefore become as much a part of school life as the lessons themselves. We eat the fruit here in the school during the mid-morning breakfast before recreation time. Last year we were the winners of the second school poster competition for the fruit and vegetable plan, which is also motivating for the students. The Canary Islands and of course Tenerife are special places. We maintain our unique identity and our population continues to have good eating habits. And that reflects our belief in the value and richness of zero-kilometer products valor y la riqueza de los productos de kilómetro cero. And of course, to demonstrate a commitment to zero kilometer products, what better fruit to give to students than the iconic Platano de Canarias PGI with the GI logo on it? But as Maria Nieves explains, it's just one of many fruits devoured by Los Cristianos students. We can say that it's an attractive fruit due to its color, texture and aroma. It's also a very easy fruit to peel, which favors consumption by children. It has a significant concentration of high-quality nutrients and aromatic substances. The potassium and carbohydrates in the fruit make it ideal for energy. Our students enjoy all kinds of fruits and vegetables, including of course Platano de Canarias, but also oranges, melons, papaya, tomatoes and water. As we left the Canary Islands, we asked Maria Nieves to suggest to our listeners a special way to consume Platano de Canarias. In the Canary Islands, it was a tradition to snack on candied banana with biscuits. You put a little orange juice on it and made a sweet base that was highly appreciated by Canarian children. Thank you, Maria Nieves Hernández Velázquez, director of Los Cristianos School in Tenerife. Global in outlook and composition, but through the EU school scheme, teaching pupils about the gastronomic jewel in their backyard. Now, time for a look at the policy behind the stories, and I'm pleased to welcome Aniko Nemeth from the European Commission's Directorate General for Agriculture and Rural Development, who's a policy officer in the unit responsible for geographical indications. Aniko, remind us first about what constitutes a geographical indication. Geographical indications are the names of foods and drinks, which have certain qualities, characteristics or reputation, which are uh, linked to factors present in their area of origin where they are being produced. In practice, this means if we grow a product somewhere else in another region or produce uh, food product from the same ingredients with the same method, the characteristics and the taste would be different from the one with the GI. Yes, and we heard earlier from Santiago about the particular characteristics of the climate and the soil in the Canary Islands that make the Platano de Canarias unique. Now, GIs have an important economic dimension, don't they? All the benefits they bring, they bring to the area of production and primarily contribute to local economies. Uh, this is particularly le- relevant for the outermost regions, in our case, uh, the Canary Islands, due to the specific characteristics, the isolation and other aspects of these uh, territories and the related challenges they face. There are some examples of uh, GI uh, products which are produced in outermost regions of the Union. For example, the Melon de Guadeloupe with GI, uh, or the Vani de Ile de la Réunion from France, or the Alho de Graciosa PGI garlic from the Azores, Portugal. There are something like 3,500 GI products registered under this EU system. Is there room for any more? Of course, there are still opportunities to register new GIs in, in uh, Europe. There is an interest in uh, the new GI registrations, uh, which is demonstrated by the number of new applications, which is a positive sign. Uh, already during the past years, we have made efforts to highlight the benefits of the GIs to producers and also to explain better the application procedure. 
what is very positive that these new registrations are also coming from countries with less GIs, for example, the more northern and eastern member states, and we are very pleased with the progress. Thanks, Aniko, for your contribution to Food for Europe. It was a great pleasure to be with you today. Now to your colleague Carlos Martín Ovilo, your Deputy Head of Unit of Animal Products, which deals with the EU school scheme. Carlos, give us first of all some background to the scheme, why it exists. Yeah, the first school scheme was uh, conceived for milk. It was introduced in the 70s. A second separate scheme was introduced in 2007, targeting uh, fruit and vegetables. The goal continues, on the one hand, to uh, keep encouraging uh, children to to consume more fruit, uh, vegetables, milk and milk products uh, at the stage where their eating habits are being being formed. But now we have a second important uh, objective, which is promote the healthy eating habits by, by students. And tell us more about the link between GI products and the school scheme. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I would mention two different angles. On, on, on one uh, hand, the distribution of GIs implies distribution of proximity products because normally they are sourced in, um, locally or regionally, so that has uh, already certain social and environmental impact of, of the scheme. But as I mentioned before, we have also an educational objective, and, uh, and this objective also incorporates the need to, to reconnect children with agriculture. And GIs are the perfect example where kids can make the link between the product, the territory, and the tradition. So if there are teachers or school children listening to this, how can they get involved? I would say, first of all, go to our website. Uh, we have in, in, in the DG Agri website, there's a, there's a web page where the school scheme is explained. But there are also sections with the school scheme by country where one can find the strategies of each member state so one can see what directions each member state has, is taking. And very importantly, the contact points of, of each member state. So in the case of a school, they should address member states who are responsible for the implementation of the scheme so they have all the practical information. Carlos, thanks also to you for coming on the programme. Thank you so much. Well, that's it for another episode of Food for Europe. Our first, but hopefully not our last, from the Canary Islands. The farthest we've travelled so far to show you the amazing diversity of Europe's food and farming. Thanks to our reporter John Beckley for his work in Santa Cruz de Tenerife and to all our guests. You can find all our previous programmes in English, French and German on the DG Agri website and all the usual podcast platforms. Join us again soon for another episode of Food for Europe. We look forward to your company. Organic farming is steadily increasing. That's good. Pour parler d'agriculture et d'Europe à la jeunesse. The climate change affects ever wider parts of the world. Farmers help us bring nature back and preserve biodiversity. Ceux qui sont dans le rouge s'en sortent quand ils font plus vert. La qualité dans ce pays, elle doit être là pour tous. 